Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Then, when the trumpet is blown, there will be no kinship among them that day, nor will they ask of one another. 23101. Nor intercession. Meaning, they will not benefit by the intercession of anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. And it is the disbelievers who are the wrongdoers. Indicates that no injustice is worse than meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day while a disbeliever Ibn Abi Hadam recorded that Adabin Dinar said. All thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who said. And it is the disbelievers who are the wrongdoers, but did not say, and it is the wrongdoers who are the disbelievers. 2255 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None has the right to be worshipped but he. The ever living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? 251. He knows what happens to them, his creatures, in this world, and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never compass anything of his knowledge, except that which he wills. His curse extends over the heavens and the earth. And he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them. And he is the most high, the most great. The virtue of I all cursey. This is, I all cursey and tremendous virtues have been associated with it, for the authentic Hadith describes it as the greatest I in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ahmad recorded that Abay bin Qab said that. The Prophet asked him about the greatest ayah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Abay answered, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger know better. When the Prophet repeated his question several times, Abay said, I all cursey. The Prophet commented. 252. Congratulations for having knowledge, O Abu al here. By in whose hand is my soul. This ayah has a tongue and two lips with which she praises the king, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, next to the leg of the throne. This hadith was also collected by Muslim, but he did not include the part that starts with by he in whose hand. Imam Ahmad recorded that. Abu Abd said that he had some dates and a ghoul used to take some, and he complained to the Prophet. The Prophet said to him, When you see her, say, In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, answer to the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Abd said that when she came again, he said these words and he was able to grab her. She begged, I will not come again, so Abu Abd released her. Abu Abd went to the Prophet and the Prophet asked him, What did your prisoner do? Abu Abd said, I grabbed her and she said twice, I will not come again, and I released her. The Prophet said, she will come back. Abu Abd said, so I grabbed her twice or three times, yet each time, I would release her when, she vowed not, to come back. I would go to the Prophet who would ask me, what is, the news of your prisoner? I would say, I grabbed her, then released her when she said that she would not, return. The Prophet would say that she would return. 253 once, I grabbed her and she said, release me and I will, teach you something to recite so that no harm touches, you, that is, I all cursey. Abu Abd went to the Prophet and told him, and the Prophet said, she is liar, but she told the truth. At tirmizi recorded this hadith in the chapter of the virtues of the Quran and said, Hasan Garib. In Arabic, Ghul refers to the jinn when they appear at night. Al-Bakari reported a similar story in his Sahih from Abu Huraira in the chapters on the virtues of the Quran and the description of Shaitan. In this narration, Abu Huraira said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger assigned me to keep watch over the Sadaqah, charity, of Ramadan. A person snuck in and started taking handfuls of food stuff. I caught him and said, By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will take you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger. He said, Release me, for I am meek and have many dependents and am in great need. I released him, and in the morning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger asked me, What did your prisoner do yesterday, O Abu, Herrera? I said, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger. He complained of being needy and of having many dependents, so I pitied him and let him go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger said, Indeed, he told you a lie and will be coming again. I believe that he would show up again, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger had told me that he would return. So, I, watched for him. When he, showed up and, started, stealing handfuls of food stuff, I caught hold of him again, and said, I will definitely take you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger. He said, leave me, for I am very needy and have many, dependents. I promise I will not come back again. I pitied him and let him go. 254 In the morning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger asked me, What did, your prisoner do last night, O Abu Herrera? I replied, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger. He complained of his great need and of too many dependents, so I took pity on him and set him free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger said, Verily, he told you a lie. He will return. I waited for him attentively for the third time, and when he came and started stealing handfuls of the foodstuff, I caught hold of him and said, I will surely take you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger as it is the third time you promised not to return, yet you returned. He said, Let me teach you some words which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you benefit from. I asked, What are they? He replied, Whenever you go to bed, recite, I all, cursey Allah 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 who will hail Kam, till, you finish the whole verse. If you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, appoint a guard for you who will stay with you, and no, Shaitan will come near you until morning. So, I released him. In the morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger asked, What did your, prisoner do yesterday? I replied, O oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger. He claimed that he, would teach me some words by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant me, some benefit, so I let him go. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger asked, What are they? I replied, He said to me, Whenever you go to bed, recite I all cursi from the beginning to the end, Allah halalah halalah who will hail qiyam. He, further said to me, If you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint a guard for you who will stay with you, and no, shaitan, will come near you until morning. 255. One of the narrators, then commented that they, the, companions, were very keen to do good deeds. The Prophet said, he spoke the truth, although he is a, liar. Do you know whom you were talking to, these three, nights, O Abu Huraira? Abu Huraira said, no. He said, it was, Shaitan. And Nasari also recorded this hadith in Al-Yam wa wal Layla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatest name is in Ayah al-Kursi. Imam Ahmad recorded that Azma bint Yazid ben Asaykin said, I heard the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about these two, Ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None has the right to be worshipped but he, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. 2.255 And Alif Lam Mem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala None has the right to be worshipped but he, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. 3, one, two. They contain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatest name. 256 This is also the narration collected by Abu Dawud at Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and at Tirmizi said, Hasan, Sahih. Further, Ibn Marduya recorded that Abu Mama reported that the Prophet said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatest name, if he was supplicated with it, he, answers the supplication, is in three shuras, all, Baqarah, all Imran and Taha. Hisham ben Amar, the Kitab, Order, of Damascus, one of the narrators in the above narration, said, As for all Baqarah, it is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None has the right to be worshipped but, he, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. In, all Imran, it is in. 257. Alif Lam Mem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None has the right to be worshipped but he, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. 3 1 to 2. While in Taha, it is in. And all faces shall be humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. 2111. I all cursi has 10 complete Arabic sentences. 1. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None has the right to be worshipped but he. Mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and only Lord of all creation. 2. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. All hail Qiyam. Testifies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever living, who never, dies, who sustains everyone and everything. All creation stands in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and totally relies, on him, while he is the most rich, who stands in, need of nothing created. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And among his signs is that the heaven, and the earth stand by his command. 3025. 3. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. 258. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. Means, no shortcoming, unawareness or, ignorance ever touches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, he is aware, of, and controls what every soul earns, has, perfect watch over everything, nothing escapes, his knowledge, and no secret matter is secret to, him. Among his perfect attributes, is the fact that he is, never affected by slumber or sleep. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, neither slumber, overtakes him, indicates that no unawareness, due to slumber ever overtakes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said afterwards, nor sleep, which is, stronger than slumber. It is recorded in the Sahih that Abu Musa said, The Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered a speech, regarding four words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sleep, and it does not befit His Majesty that He sleeps. He lowers the scales and raises them. The deeds of the day are resurrected, in front of Him before the deeds of the night, and the deeds of the night before the deeds of the day. His veil is light, or fire, and if He removes it, the rays from His face would burn whatever His sight reaches of His creation. 4. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. To Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Indicates that everyone is a servant for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a part of his kingdom and under his power and authority. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, There is none in the heavens and the earth, but comes unto the most gracious, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a servant. Verily, he knows each one of them, and has counted them a full counting. And every one of them will come to him, alone on the day of resurrection, without any helper, or protector or defender. 1993-95 5. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement who is he that can't intercede with him except with his permission? 259 is similar to his statements. And there are many angels in the heavens, whose intercession will avail nothing except after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given leave for whom he wills and is pleased, with. 5326. And. They cannot intercede except for him with whom he is pleased. 2128. These I assert Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness, pride, and grace, and that no one dares to intercede with him on behalf of anyone else, except by his permission. Indeed, the hadith about the intercession, states that, the Prophet said, I will stand under the throne and fall in prostration, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow me to remain in that position as much as he wills. I will thereafter be told, raise your head, speak and you will be heard, intercede and your intercession will be accepted. The Prophet then said, he will allow me a proportion whom I will enter into paradise. 6. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. He knows what happens to them, his creatures, in this world, and what will happen to them in the hereafter. 
260 This refers to his perfect knowledge of all, creation, its past, present and future. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the angels proclaimed, And we, angels, descend not except by the command of your Lord, O Muhammad. To him belongs what is before us and what is behind us, and what is between those two. And your Lord is never forgetful. 1964. 7. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. And they will never compass anything of his knowledge, except that which he wills. Asserts the fact that no one attains any part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveys and allows. This part of the ayah indicates that no one ever acquires knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his attributes, except what he conveys to them. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 261. But they will never compass anything of his knowledge. 20. 110. 8. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. His cursey extends over the heavens and the earth. Wacky narrated in his tafsir that Ibn Abbas said, Cursey is the footstool, and no one is able to give due consideration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. Al Hakim recorded this hadith in his Mustadrak from Ibn Abbas, who did not relate it to the Prophet. Al Hakim said, It is Sahih according to the criteria of the two Sahis, and they, Al Bakari and Muslim, did not record it. In addition, Ad Dawud said that Ibn Abbas said, If the seven heavens and the seven earths were flattened and laid side by side, they would add up to the size of a ring in a desert, compared to the Kursi. 9. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. 262. And he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them. Meaning, it does not burden or cause him fatigue to protect the heavens and earth and all that is in between them. Rather, this is an easy matter for him. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains everything, has perfect watch over everything, nothing ever escapes his knowledge and no matter is ever a secret to him. All matters are insignificant, modest and humble, before him. He is the most rich, worthy of all praise. He does what he wills, and no one can ask him about what he does, while they will be asked. He has supreme power over all things and perfect alertness concerning everything. He is the most high, the greatest, there is no deity worthy of worship except him, and no lord other than him. 10. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. 263. And he is the most high, the most great. Is similar to his statement. The most great, the most high. 39. These and similar ayah and authentic hadiths about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes must be treated the way the Salaf, righteous ancestors, treated them by accepting their apparent meanings without equating them with the attributes of the creation or altering their apparent meanings. 2. 256. There is no compulsion in religion. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelieves in Taggart and believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all, hearer, all knower. No compulsion in religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, There is no compulsion in religion. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. There is no compulsion in religion. Meaning, do not force anyone to become Muslim, for Islam is plain and clear, and its proofs and evidence are plain and clear. Therefore, there is no need to force anyone to embrace Islam. Rather, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs to Islam, opens his heart for it and enlightens his mind, will embrace Islam with certainty. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blinds his heart and seals his hearing and sight, then he will not benefit from being forced to embrace Islam. It was reported that the answer were the reason behind revealing this, ayah, although its indication is general in meaning. Ibn Ajriya recorded that Ibn Abbas said that before Islam, when an answer, woman would not bear children who would live, she would vow that if she gives birth to a child who remains alive, she would raise him as a Jew. When Banu and Nader, the Jewish tribe, were evacuated from al Medina, some of the children of the answer were being raised among them, and the answer said, We will not abandon our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, There is no compulsion in religion. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Abu Dawud and Nasari also recorded this hadith. As for the hadith that Imam Ahmad recorded, in which Anna said that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to a man, Embrace Islam. 264 The man said, I dislike it. The Prophet said, Even if you dislike it, First, this is an authentic hadith with only three narrators between Imam Ahmad and the Prophet. However, it is not relevant to the subject under discussion, for the Prophet did not force that man to become Muslim. The Prophet merely invited this man to become Muslim, and he replied that he does not find himself eager to become Muslim. The Prophet said to the man that even though he dislikes embracing Islam, he should still embrace it, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you sincerity and true intent. Ta'wit is the most trustworthy handhold. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. Whoever disbelieves in Taggart and believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all here, all knower. Is in reference to whoever shuns the rivals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the idols, and those that Shaitan calls to be worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness, worships him alone and testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except him, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. Therefore, this person will have acquired firmness in the religion and proceeded on the correct way and the straight path. 
Abu al Qasim al Bagawi retorted that Umar said, Jibd means magic, and Tagad means shaitan. 265 Verily, courage and cowardice are two instincts, that appear in men, the courageous fights for, those whom he does not know and the coward, runs away from defending his own mother. Man's, honor resides with his religion and his status is, based upon his character, even if he was Persian, or Nabatian. Umar's statement that, Tagad is shaitan is very, sound, for this meaning includes every type of evil that, the ignorant people of, Jagalaya, pre-Islamic era of, ignorance, fell into, such as worshipping idols, referring, to them for judgment, and invoking them for victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. Then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. Means, he will have hold of a true religion with the strongest grasp. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated this adherence to the firm handhold that never breaks because it is built solid and because its handle is firmly connected. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here. Then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. Mujahid said. The most trustworthy handhold is Iman, faith. As Sadi said that. It refers to Islam. Imam Ahmad recorded that Case bin Abad said. I was in the masjid when a man whose face showed signs of humbleness came and prayed, two rakahs that were modest in length. The people said, this is a man from among the 266 people of paradise. When he left, I followed him until he entered his house, and I entered it after him and spoke with him. When he felt at ease, I said to him, when you entered the masjid, the people said such and such things. He said, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one should say what he has no knowledge of. I will tell you why they said that. I saw a vision during the time of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I narrated it to him. I saw that I was in a green garden, and he described the gardens, plants and spaciousness, and there was an iron pole in the middle of the garden affixed in the earth and its tip reached the sky. On its tip, there, was a handle, and I was told to ascend the pole. I said, I cannot. Then a helper came and raised my robe from behind and said to me, Ascend. I ascended until I grasped the handle and he said, To me, hold on to the handle. I awoke from that dream with the handle in my hand. I went to the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and told him about the vision and he said, As for the garden, it represents Islam. As for the pole, it represents the pillar of Islam. And the handle represents the most trustworthy handled. You shall remain Muslim until you die. This companion was Abdullah bin Salam. This hadith was also collected in the two sahis. And al-Bakari also recorded it with another chain of narration. 267 to 257 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wali, protector or guardian of those who believe. He brings them out from darknesses into light. But as for those who disbelieve, their alia, supporters and helpers, are taget, false deities, and false leaders, they bring them out from light, into darknesses. Those are the dwellers of the fire, and they will abide therein forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wali, protector or guardian, of those who believe. He brings them out from darknesses into light. But as for those who disbelieve, their alia, supporters and helpers, are taget, false deities and false leaders, they bring them out from light into darknesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that whoever follows what pleases him, he will guide him to the paths of peace, that is Islam, or paradise. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers his believing servants from the darkness of disbelief, doubt and hesitation, to the light of the plain, clear, explained, easy and unequivocal truth. He also stated that, Shaitan is the supporter of the disbelievers who beautifies the paths of ignorance and muscadence that they follow, thus, causing them to deviate from the true path into disbelief and wickedness. 268. Those are the dwellers of the fire, and they will abide therein forever. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the light in the singular while mentioned the darkness in the plural, because truth is one, while disbelief comes, as several types, all of which are false. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And verily, this is my straight path, so, follow it, and follow not, other, paths, for, they will separate you away from his path. This he has ordained for you that you may, have, taqwa. 6-153 And originated the darknesses and the light. 6-1 And 269 To the right and to the lefts. 1648 there are many other, I on a subject that mention, the truth in the singular and falsehood in the plural, because of falsehood's many divisions and branches. 2-258 Have you not looked at him who disputed, with Ibrahim about his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had given him the kingdom. When Ibrahim said, to him, my Lord is he who, gives life and causes death. He said, I give life and cause death. Ibrahim said, verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the sun from the, east. Then bring it you from the west. So the disbeliever was utterly defeated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides not the people who are wrongdoers. The debate between Ibrahim al Khalil and King Nimrod. The king who disputed with Ibrahim was King Nimrod, son of Canaan, son of Cush, son of Sam, son of Noah, as Majahid, stated. It was also said that he was Nimrod, son of Phalak, son of Abur, son of Shalak, son of Arfax Hand, son of Sam, son of Noah. Majahid said. The kings who ruled the eastern and western parts of the world are four, two believers and two disbelievers. As for the two believing kings, they were Salimon bin Dawud and Delcornan. As for the two disbelieving kings, they were 270 Nimrod and Nebuchadnezzar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Have you not looked? Meaning, with your heart, O Muhammad. 271. Adam who disputed with Ibrahim about his Lord. Meaning, about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nimrod denied the existence of a God other than, himself, as he claimed, just as Faran said later, to his people. I know not that you have a God other than, me. 2838. What made Nimrod commit this transgression, utter, disbelief and errant rebellion was his tyranny and the, fact that he ruled for a long time. This is why the ayah, continued. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him the kingdom. It appears that Nimrod asked Ibrahim to produce proof, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. When Ibrahim said, to him, my lord is he who gives, life and causes death, meaning, the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence is the, creations that exist after they were nothing and, perish after they had existed. This only proves, the existence of the creator, who does what he, wills, for these things could not have occurred on, their own without a creator who created them, and he is the lord that I call to for worship, alone, without a partner. This is what Nimrod said. 272. He said, I give life and cause death. Qatada, Muhammad bin Ishaq and Asadi said that, he meant. Two men who deserved execution were to be, brought before me, and I would command that, one of them be killed, and he would be killed. I, would command that the second man be, pardoned, and he would be pardoned. This is how, I bring life and death. However, it appears that since Nimrod did not deny the, existence of a creator, his statement did not mean what, Qatada said it meant. This explanation does not provide, an answer to what Ibrahim said. Nimrod arrogantly and, defiantly claimed that he was the creator and pretended, that it was he who brings life and death. Later on, Faran imitated him and announced, I know not that you have a god other than me. 28, 38. This is why Ibrahim said to Nimrod. Ibrahim said, Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the sun from the east. Then bring it you from the west, this ayah means. You claim that it is you who brings life and, death. He who brings life and death controls the, existence and creates whatever is in it, including, controlling its planets and their movements. For, instance, the sun rises every day from the east. Therefore, if you were God, as you claimed, bringing life and death, then bring the sun from, the west. Since the king was aware of his weakness, inadequacy, and that he was not able to reply to Ibrahim's request, he was idle, silent and unable to comment. Therefore, the proof was established against him. 273. So the disbeliever was utterly defeated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides not the people, who are wrongdoers. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprives the unjust people of any, valid proof or argument. Furthermore, their false, proof and arguments are annulled by their Lord, and they have earned this anger and will suffer, severe torment. The meaning that we provided is better than the meaning that some philosophers offered, claiming that Ibrahim used the second argument because it was clearer than the first one. Rather, our explanation asserts that Ibrahim refuted both claims of Nimrod, all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Sadi stated that the debate between Ibrahim and Nimrod occurred after Ibrahim was thrown in the fire, for Ibrahim did not meet the king before that day. 2 259 or like the one who passed by a town in ruin, up to its roofs. He said, how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever bring it to life after its death? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to die for a hundred years, then, raised him up, again. He said, How long did you, remain, dead? He, the man, said, Perhaps, I remained, dead, a day or part of a day. He said, Nay, you have remained, dead, for a hundred years, look at your food and your drink, they show no change. And look at your donkey. And, thus we have made of you a sign for the people. Look at the bones, how we bring them together and, clothe them with flesh. When this was clearly shown to him, he said, I, know, now, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. 274 The Story of Uzair Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, Have you not, looked at him who disputed with Ibrahim about his Lord, means, have you seen anyone like the person who disputed, with Ibrahim about his Lord? Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected the, ayah, or like the one who passed by a town in ruin up to its, roofs, to the, ayah above by using or. Ibn Abi Hadam recorded that Ali ibn Abi Talib said that. The ayah meant Uzair. Ibn Jrir also reported it, and this explanation was also reported by Ibn Jrir and Ibn Abi Hadam, from Ibn Abbas, Al Hassan, Qatada, Es Sadi, and Sulaiman bin Barada. Mujahid bin Jabr said that. The ayah refers to a man from the children of Israel, and the village was Jerusalem, after Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it and killed its people. In ruin, means. It became empty of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, up to its roofs, indicates that the roofs and walls of the village fell to the ground. Uzair stood contemplating about what had happened to the city after a great civilization used to inhabit it. He said, Oh, how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever bring it to life after its death? 275 Because of the utter destruction he saw and the implausibility of its returning to what it used to be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to die for a hundred years, then raised him up again. The city was rebuilt seventy years after the man, Uzair, died, and its inhabitants increased and the children of Israel moved back to it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrected Uzair, after he died, the first organ that he resurrected were, his eyes, so that he could witness what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does with, him, how he brings life back to his body. When his, resurrection was complete, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, meaning, through the angel. He said, how long did you remain, dead? 
he, the, man, said, perhaps, I remained, dead, a day or part of, a day. The scholars said that since the man died in the early part of the day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrected him in the latter part of the day, when he saw that the sun was still apparent, he thought that it was a son of that very day. He said, or, part of a day. He said, nay, you have remained dead for a hundred years. Look at your food and your drink. They show no change. He had grapes, figs and juice, and he found them as he left them. Neither did the juice spoil nor the figs become bitter nor the grapes rot. And look at your donkey. 276. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings it back to life while you are watching. 277. And thus we have made of you a sign for the people. That resurrection occurs. Look at the bones, how we nunchazua. Meaning, collect them and put them back, together. And is, Mustadrak, al Hakim, recorded that. Karaj bin Zaid bin Abbad said that his father said that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala read this ayah, how we nunchazua. Al Hakim said, Its chain is Sahih and they, all, Bukhari and Muslim, did not record it. The ayah was also read, nunchruha. Meaning, bring them back to life, as Mujahid, stated. And clothe them with flesh. As Sadi said, Uzair observed the bones of his donkey, which, were scattered all around him to his right and, left, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a wind that collected the, bones from all over the area. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then brought, every bone to its place, until they formed a full, donkey made of fleshless bones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then, covered these bones with flesh, nerves, veins and, skin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel who blew life in the donkey's nostrils, and the donkey started to bray, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's leave. When this was clearly shown to him. 278. All this occurred while Uzair was watching, and, this is when he proclaimed. He said, I know, now, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all, things. Meaning, I know that, and I did witness it with, my own eyes. Therefore, I am the most, knowledgeable in this matter among the people of, my time. 2260 and, remember, when Ibrahim said, my, lord. Show me how you give life to the dead. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, Do you not believe? He, Ibrahim, said, Yes, I believe, but to be, stronger in faith. He said, Take four birds, then cause them to, incline towards you, then slaughter them, cut them, into pieces, and then put a portion of them on, every hill, and call them, they will come to you in, haste. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty, all wise. The camel supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how he, resurrects the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, My lord, Show me how you give life to the dead. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, Do you not believe? He, Ibrahim, said, Yes, I believe, but to be stronger in faith. The scholars said that. There are reasons behind this request by Ibrahim. For instance, when Ibrahim said to Nimrod, My lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is he who gives life and causes death, he wanted to solidify his knowledge about resurrection by actually witnessing it with his eyes. Al Bukhari recorded that Abu Huraira said that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we are more liable to be in doubt than Ibrahim, when he said, My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Don't you believe? Ibrahim said, Yes, I believe, but, I ask, in order, to be stronger in faith. The Prophet's statement in the Hadith means, We are more liable to seek certainty. 279 The answer to all Khalil's request. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He said, Take four birds, then cause them to incline, towards you. Scholars of Tafsir disagreed over the type of birds, mentioned here, although this matter is not relevant due, to the fact that the Quran did not mention it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, cause them to incline towards you, means, cut them to pieces. 280. This is the explanation of Ibn Abbas, Ikrima, Sayyid ben Jubair, Abu Malik, Abu Alizwadat, Dili, Wahb ben Munabi, al Hassan and Asadi. And then put a portion of them on every hill, and call, them, they will come to you in haste. Therefore, Ibrahim caught four birds, slaughtered them, removed the feathers, tore the birds to pieces and mixed the pieces together. He then placed parts of these mixed pieces on four or seven hills. Ibn Abbas said, Ibrahim kept the heads of these birds in his hand. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim to call the birds to him, and he did as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him. Ibrahim witnessed the feathers, blood and flesh of these birds fly to each other, and the parts flew each to their bodies, until every bird came back to life and came walking at a fast pace towards Ibrahim, so that the example that Ibrahim was witnessing would become more impressive. Each bird came to collect its head from Ibrahim's hand, and if he gave the bird another head the bird refused to accept it. When Ibrahim gave each bird its own head, the head was placed on its body by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's leave and power. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty, all wise and no one can overwhelm or resist him. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, occurs without hindrance, because he is the Almighty, supreme above all, things, and he is wise in his statements, actions, legislation and decrees. Abdur Ratsak recorded that Mamar said that Ab said, that Ibn Abbas commented on what Ibrahim said. But to be stronger in faith. To me, there is no ayah in the Quran that, brings more hope than this ayah. Ibn Abi Hadam recorded that Muhammad bin al munkadr said that, Abdullah bin Abbas met Abdullah bin Amr bin Al, as and said to him, which, ayah in the Quran, carries more hope for you.
Ibn Amr said. Say, O Ibani, my servants, who have, transgressed against themselves, by committing, evil deeds and sins. Despair not, 